Howdy folks, Josh here with the Weekend Angler. You guys probably remember this. This is the uh, homemade rod and reel that I built a couple months ago as part of the challenge I'm doing with Chris Flores for Muddy River Catfishing. And uh, the plan was to come out in April and try to catch our catfish, but we had here in Southern Illinois one of the coldest Aprils on record. We actually had snow halfway through the month. So guys, it's middle of May. I'm out here, I've got the homemade rod and reel, I've got the bait, let's see if we can catch a fish on the homemade rod and reel. Alright folks, well we're headed over to uh, where I'm going to put my lines out and try to catch fish. Let me go over the uh, rig I'm going to be starting out with today. And uh, this is basically a uh, Carolina rig of sorts, but uh, there's a twist to it. And I'll show you what we got going on there. What I've done here, I've got a three way barrel swivel. I have used a snap to attach me a four ounce weight to the barrel swivel. Now what that does is that keeps that swivel or keeps that weight from being able to slide up and down and up and down the line. Where I'm going to be fishing today, there's a lot of wood, a lot of snags. I don't want to get hung up the best I can. It's going to happen, but uh, if I can avoid it, it's going to be better. So I've got a short leader. This is about an eight or 10 inch long leader. I've got an eight odd team catfish double action circle hook here. I've got that tied on with a snell knot. This is 50 pound Berkeley big game mono. I've got some beads here. That's just to uh, keep this Versa rattle up off of the hook. That way I'm not obstructing the hook. And uh, like I said, this is a Versa rattle. These things will spin around, make a little bit of noise. And uh, I'm gonna be using live bait today to see if I can't uh, coax one of these flatheads into biting. Uh, but that's that rig. I'm going to be putting out a couple more just to, uh, I've got some shad and uh, I figure I'm going to put a, a live bluegill on that rod and then I'll use a uh, maybe some cut pieces of shad just to try to figure out what the fish are wanting today. But uh, we're going to go around to the other side of the beach here and uh, what we've got over here is an old section of road that is sunk. It's actually underneath the lake and uh, it's starting to crumble and a lot of the big cats get up there and lay up next to that road or up underneath that road in the holes. So I figure that's a good place that they need to start out trying to find our fish today. So let's head on over. We'll see what we can come up with. Well, folks, about the time I was ready to actually put a line in the water and try to catch a catfish, uh, I started hearing thunder off to the west and uh, so I'm back at the boat ramp right now, sitting in the truck, waiting on, waiting out a uh, thunderstorm. I've looked at the radar, it doesn't look like it's going to take too long to get through here, but it does look pretty nasty. So, I'm going to hang out here and uh, watch my phone and wait for it to uh, be done and over with, and then we'll be back out on the water, hopefully. Let's get the rods out. Try to make something happen. We're going to start out with the one that brought us out here. That's the uh, homemade rod. We'll get this set out. Uh, hopefully, I've still got live bluegill in there, guys. I don't know. Uh, I had to, it took me about an hour or so to wait out this thunderstorm, so I don't know if I started bluegill or not. So you guys see what I did? I cut that fin off. I cut one off on its side. Give me a second here and we'll bait him up. Now, like I said earlier, there's a road bed that runs through here. 
and you can almost see it. There's a little bit of a current seam. Let me get some gloves on. Last time I tried to catch this, I pulled my fingers up pretty good. Gloves are soaked. But they're better than getting all cut up. So that's it. There's one rod out. And like I said, I'm going to put us out a couple more. Shad, just to see if something maybe wants something a little bit different. Well, that's good timing. That was my alarm letting me know it was time to move my baits well I am taking this thing off so we've got so far I got two fish See what our bluegill's doing here. Still alive. I'm gonna get me a big hunk of shad. Let's get a big hunk of shad out. And we'll, uh, we'll try this again with a shad. Look at that thing. Head. We got us a cut shad head now. Still got my Versa rattle. Let me put my gloves on and we'll uh get this one back out. I'm going to try to get it a little bit closer to shore this time. You remember, it's been a while since I've cast this, uh, cast this rod. And, uh, Chris, you got me beat, buddy, on the, uh, castability of your reel. Uh, I still say you're a mechanical genius on that one. Guys, if you haven't watched Chris's video yet, he made a hybrid casting slash spinning reel that uh, buddy to be truly and honest you probably ought to go ahead and patent that all right there's a little bit better get that put in a monster rod holder get my line tightened up here tighten that up tighten that wing nut down some drag. We're baited three lines again. Let's see if we can get some more fish. Well guys, it's about 7.30. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of daylight left. I'm gonna fish out here till 8 o'clock. And uh, if I don't have anything by then, I'll just come out here tomorrow in the morning and uh, try it again. Uh, one thing we can say, we have found the fish out here uh, we have found some fish 
Well, it's a rather good sized fish. Uh, like I said, I, th I don't think they're done spawning. I think they're spa uh, I think they're up here shallow spawning. And uh, that's why I've been letting everything that I've caught go tonight. But, uh, guys, I've lost track of the number of fish we've had. Uh, every one of them has been on uh, cut shad. I do have some bluegill. I had a live bluegill out for a little while uh, when I first started out, but uh, nothing become of it. Fish on. I think it's a decent fish, guys. Come on. <laughs> I've purposely not watched your video yet, buddy. I don't know what you caught. No, no, no. got into the motor guys
There we go, baby. There we go. <laughs> On the homemade rod. Look at that. Big old fat cat there. Chris, there you go, buddy. Woo! <laughs> I didn't think he was coming in, folks. I ain't kidding you. He got himself wrapped around the wrapped around the outboard. Took a whole bunch of line all at once and uh, kind of backlashed me on my reel. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. And that was a workout. Oh my God. He got me bleeding too. solid 12 pound channel cat guys we're gonna let him go and uh, looks like we're about to lose our daylight too so take a look at him look at that big old solid crab orchard lake channel cat He don't like my finger in his mouth. Whew. Hey, he biting down, look at that. All right, see you, buddy. Guys, that was the toughest fight I think I've honestly ever had in my life. I've caught a lot of fish. I've caught a lot of catfish out of this lake. I ain't never had a fight like that. And I'll show you what he did. He ran and I wasn't paying attention. He's got line wrapped all over the place on this thing. So. I'm gonna try to get that unhooked. Tangles and tangles and tangles galore. Everything was against me on getting that in. But I got it in. So I'm going to get my line round back up on this thing. my alarm too. 7.45 p.m. Guys, this has been a blast. Now, uh, while I'm doing that, Chris, I'm going to tell you a funny story here, buddy. Uh, my dad and I fished this stretch right here quite a, quite a bit, especially in the summertime. And uh, I'll see if I can find a video. I know he put it on YouTube, but I'll see if I'll see if I can find a video. But what we do, once the water gets warm like it is right now, we'll get out of the boat and uh, we will jig like a leech or something, and we'll walk up and down that roadway 
all the way. I mean, it runs clean clear to the other side of the lake. Obviously, you can't walk that far, but we'll walk all the way back there where it comes in, all the way until we can't uh, walk any further. And uh, we'll jig, we'll just bottom bounce a leech on a treble hook. And those fish will come out from underneath that road and uh, you got a fight on your hands. And uh, I actually, before I come out here today, I went and bought me some leeches and I brought me some treble hooks. And uh, if I hadn't have caught anything tonight, tight lining, I was going to get in this water and I was gonna take that homemade rod and I was gonna jig me a leech and walk up and down. Cause I figured if I, if, if I couldn't bring the fish to me, I was gonna go to the fish. Uh, that, that's how determined I was to, to catch a fish today on that homemade rod. I'm out of breath. <laughs> that is the most fun I've had fishing in I don't know how long. That, guys, that was a blast. Guys, I'm going to gather everything up here and uh, get everything put away, get this bait well emptied out. I've got, still got a bunch of shad in here and uh, get everything put up and... Uh, We'll finish this up, but uh, the homemade rod and reel challenge is a success. And I just felt a raindrop, so I may be getting out of here right at the right time. But uh, Chris, buddy, I am so glad you agreed to do this with me. Uh, I can't tell you how much fun I've had with this. I hope you hope you've had fun with yours as well. Uh, if I get home tonight, I'm going to watch your video. I, I purposely didn't watch it yet. I didn't want to jinx myself. And, uh, but I almost wore my uh, Muddy River catfishing hat out here today for good luck because I knew you would come up with a fish. So uh, I'm going to get everything wrapped up here. We'll get back to the boat ramp. And we'll finish this thing up, guys. Whew! I'm out of breath. Guys, while I still have a little bit of daylight, I want to tell y'all thank you for watching my videos as always. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think of this. This has been the most fun I've had since I started doing YouTube fishing videos. But uh, like I said, I think they're just about done spawning. I think they're about spawned out. And uh, once that's done, it'll be time to go out and get a mess of eater cats somewhere, you know, two or three pound channel cats. And... Uh, we take those out of the lake without hurting the population at all. So, guys, take care. We'll catch you out on the water. Appreciate you watching the weekend angle.